Hello guys, thank you for tuning into my channel. I am Azrael, and in this video I am going to be talking about magic lamps or the use of lamps in magic. Okay, now every tradition that, uh, or every culture, you know, has some kind of folklore involving lamps or candles. Okay, uh, the most popular one that you probably already know of is Aladdin's lamp, you know, with the genie. Uh, this tradition actually uh, does exist where you have the concept of a spirit being housed in the lamp, either by force, uh, magical bondage, or by a spirit binding it uh, to that lamp, or basically asking a jinn or a spirit to house within the lamp uh, to work on your behalf. Okay, so... How do you use this? Well, the ones I'm going to be talking about mostly are going to be uh, the common what's called a hurricane lamp. Okay, a hurricane lamp is basically just a lamp with a shielding to help protect the flame from being blown out in case of a gust of wind. That's why it's called a hurricane lamp. Um, this, in our culture uh, in the United States, this uh, weighs heavily on... Um, uh, southern hoodoo and voodoo traditions okay again they're i mean well they're not the ones that invented magic lamps like i said every culture used them at one point or or in their life you see people don't really use lamps anymore so it's mostly for like decoration uh people love their candles their scented candles and their so forth so that's still relevant but people used what they had on hand and lamps were a big part of our life back in the days before electricity. Um, a lot of times, because it was just easier to make or easier to have than constantly buying candles. So have something you can reuse and refill it with various oils, uh, and it works. So uh, here in uh, the United States, down in Lake Louisiana and so forth, there's a big tradition of using magic lamps. Uh, they often are acted, uh, basically treated similar to candles, uh, they keep them burning constantly if it's for a specific deity. Um, some of the traditions state that you don't blow it out until you get your heart's desire, which kind of correlates with some candle magic where you have to burn the candle all the way down. You don't have to be very dogmatic about it. Um, I do not believe in burning candles or lamps regardless, uh, unattended for, it, well, unattended period, okay? Um, there is ways to do it safer, like putting the lamp or the candle in a uh, burn-proof uh, container or spill-proof container somewhere where it won't tip over, catch on fire, or whatnot. Now, some of these lamps um, are not practical to use because they're they moved from being practical use to being kind of decorative. Okay, so I like making my own. Uh, I add my own little twist. It feels more rustic. Uh, I could buy a super cool lamp that looks like the Aladdin's lamp, you know, where it has that little handle and it has that little spout where the little wick is and it just constantly wicks. But I've seen them priced for several hundred dollars. I just make my own. Very simple to make. Here is a jar that used to contain food. Um, I poked a hole at the top. Now, you see how this mason jar has a little, it's, it's lit as, it's one piece. So it was important for me to flip it over and poke the hole in it with a nail or a chisel. Because uh, if I did it with this side up, I might crush the lid. Also, if you do it from the bottom outwards, it creates a little pokeage of metal that going, going up like this. So when you shove the wick through, it kind of acts as a natural catch, right? If you don't do it that way, because uh, like you might have a mason jaw that has two pieces, uh, where it has the center part and then the part that screws over it. Uh, you could use a paper clip to kind of hold it. Okay. Um, I don't have a paper clip because mine worked fine. The wick that you want to use is... Going to, should be made out of cotton. You can even use a cotton ball. There's very, very several different variations where you unroll a cotton ball 
and you make the wick long enough. Uh, and then you burn that because cotton burns cleaner and it's more absorbent than, say, polyester. And a lot of these things have polyester blends. But this I took from an old towel. I cut a long strip. You want, you want it to be at, at least 30% longer than the container you're using. So if your container is about a half a foot, you want to put make it about, say, nine inches instead of six inches, okay? Uh, you, once you place the oil in there, you want it to let it soak all the way up to the wick. Um, the reason why I like using olive oil or um, other uh, or oils, well, first of all, it's actually safer. See, olive oil, though it has a low smoke point where it's basically the point where it starts to smoke before it catches on fire, Um, it, it has a higher f uh, flash point. Uh, you don't want to use a low flash point. A low flash point means that it will combust into flames at a very, very low temperature. So, like, for example, gasoline, it's got such a low flash point, the flames will catch on fire and just... Poof. So this, if this was to be knocked over or broken and the olive oil was to spill out, it actually has a better chance of putting out the flame because it doesn't have a high flash point. So if it falls and breaks, you have a lesser chance of actually having an accidental fire. You fill that shit up with like kerosene, it's gone, okay? It's like a little bomb. Um, well, anyway, it's one of the things that I like about these homemade things and how you can use them is that notice there's a lot of space, more space than say one of these lamps that you can buy for decoration and or even some practical use. You uh, put your herbs in there uh, for, 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 like, if it's a money ritual, you could put uh, prosperity rice, uh, cinnamon, uh, poppy seeds, you know, corn, or, or what have you, okay? Now, uh, you got to make sure that wick is, is good enough to uh, wick up that oil quickly uh, to keep it burning. Um, and you could uh, put petition papers inside the oil. You can use uh, essential oils put on inside the olive oil or the uh, vegetable oil for your intentions as well. And it'll also give a sweet smelling, uh, well, it gives a, a nice, good, a sweet, you know what I'm saying? It's a good, nice, sweet smell. So, moving on, uh, I like to use it as, uh, for uh, putting it on top of sigils, um, which magical symbol, which uh, gives your desire, or if it's a specific name of a spirit. And it, it works just as good. Um, I like being a little bit crafty, and it kind of gives a old world feel. And again, um, the longer the wick, the uh, less bright the flame is. But but right now, it's uh, I think I'm out of choke. If you have if the f thing is uh, that you stick the hole in, if it's too tight, it might slow the uh, the, the body of oil. But in any case, a lot of people. Um, you know, this, first of all, this don't have to be done from magic, but a lot of people don't really, I've ever talked to, uh, don't really incorporate using lamps in their magic, but these kind of homemade lamps where you could uh, fill it, the oil up with uh, your intentions and so forth, you treat them just like candles, and you can use them just like in a candle ritual. You know, you can move it about and, and whatnot. And you could, I, again, I would always put it out, and I wouldn't just leave it burning. But, uh, now, if you want to house a spirit in the lamp, like you would have, say, a uh, uh, Aladdin's lamp or something like that, this is also possible. Spirits like to have their privacy, so um, a lot of times you might want to have it decorated, decorated to where you can't really see the oil per se, except for maybe a little bit. I don't know why tradition states that they like to have their privacy, but they like to be in something that they, you know, can't be seen through. So it's like a, like a doll. They'll stay in a doll a lot happier than if they stay in a glass jar. I think it has something to do with human psychology, but be that as it may. Um, I'm not going to go into how you house a spirit. Um, I would suggest you never try to force a spirit to do it, well, by force. Uh, I always ask the spirit if it'll, if it'll help you and stay there uh, like you would have a spirit in the lamp, right? So this is where the origin story is of uh, Aladdin's lamp, is that basically housing a spirit in something. Now, the, the, the psychology 
about this is similar. Don't. In fact, I can already see the comments leaving down there, down below. Oh, Jerry, no, that it has nothing to do with the lamp. Of course, it doesn't. But it's the same kind of psychological psychology. All right. See, like in the Catholic Church, there is a Eucharist, and all the Eucharist, if it's not taken during communion, is placed into a little box by the altar. And if you look to the left side or the right side, I can't remember which one. I think it's the right side. Always the right side because right hand of the Father. But sometimes it's above. Most of the Catholic churches down where I've been, there's, there's this candle of way up above, and it's lit. So whenever that candle is lit, it's telling the person who is there to pray that Christ's presence is actually presence is actually in the box by the altar where they keep the Eucharist. Uh, when it's uh, it begins to decompose or has not been used for a long time. It is believed that the essence of Christ dissipates, and it's it's no longer Christ is no longer there. So if you ever see that candle by the altar, way up high or to the right side of it, the Eucharist is or Christ is not in. Okay, this is something similar. Is that when the lamp is burning, the Spirit is present, working on your task. When the it is extinguished. The spirit is at rest, is how the tradition goes. But if you want to learn how to do it, I mean, I did a video. You might as well watch it before I take it down. Um, think of all, all my videos that have been up that I thought was going to get a lot of hits are not getting hits, so I'm probably going to take them down. But I did a video about uh, how to make haunted dolls. The concept on of attaching a spirit or a thought form to the lamp to kind of have a spirit at your disposal, as long as you still have to give it offerings, okay? Uh, which again, you could probably put this in a little bowl filled with a little bit of uh, water, just in case it don't break, put this fruits around as an offering. It's tr you treat these lamps just like candles, with the, ex uh, again, with the exception of the added benefit of being able to uh, put your intentions in the oil and use that as fuel. I hope this inspired somebody. Um, it's just pretty much straightforward, cold information. Sorry, uh, everything's lacked its luster. I'm just trying to pump out some videos that have quality information. I believe quality information is better than quality of video. So there you go. All right. Thank you for watching.